Welcome back to State of the Commonwealth. I'm Conrad Delouche, and in the 2019 legislative session, a bill involving the legalization of medical marijuana passed out of one House committee, but the bill never made it to the House floor, and it's still a hotly contested topic. Today, we want to welcome to my right, Jim Higdon, owner of the Cornbread Hemp Company, Michael Rouse, who is founder of Kentucky Bluegrass Cannabis, and on my left, Dr. Donish Maslamdust of Wellward Regenerative Medicine and Senate President Robert Stivers. Everybody welcome, good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we'll begin with each one of you taking about 30 to 45 seconds to explain your stance on medical marijuana and we'll start with Mr. Rouse. Well, thank you very much. So for me, I, there are four main reasons why I've decided to get into the medical marijuana industry and be an advocate for it, is Kentucky has a horrendous, horrendous opioid overdose crisis. It last year went up 11 and percent in your district, Senator, it has some of the highest overdose rates in the state. And the states that have um, medical marijuana programs show a 24, almost 25% reduction in opiate overdoses. Thank you, Mr. Rouse. Mr. Higdon. My feeling on this is that one could be for or against it, but it doesn't make it any less inevitable. Uh, if a medical marijuana bill passed 16 to 1 out of uh, the House Judiciary Committee. It has 53 co-sponsors in the House. So even though it didn't get a vote in the House floor, it seems clear that uh, a bill of some sort is going to get out of the House next legislative session. And eventually this is just going to happen. Dr. Adonish. Uh, I take caution with using the term medicine when we're talking about marijuana because medicine connotes something that is safe and effective, has been vetted out by the system, by the healthcare industry. And that's not the case with marijuana. There are valuable elements within it, uh, but as a whole constituency, it's, it's, it's got some risks. We did the same thing with opioids when we said they're safe, effective medicine, and now see where we're at. Um, I especially take caution about equating using marijuana to reduce the opioid epidemic, because in essence, what you're saying is marijuana is a good tool for treating addiction, not so much pain. Uh, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Senator Stivers. Well, I've always been of the opinion um, that I'm neither for or against medical marijuana. Somebody needs to prove to me it has medicinal and therapeutic value. And for years, I asked for studies, and no one would deliver those studies. Senator, we provided you 20 of them at the beginning of the session. Well, I appreciate your consideration for that, and I have them all here, and I've read them, and I have the conclusions and virtually every one of them that I've read, and I've got them highlighted, say more study is needed because the sample sizes were too small, sure. the period of times were too short, and there are some serious known side effects, such as psychotraumas, things of that nature, from prolonged use of marijuana. So I want to know, is it worthwhile, the benefits versus the risk, to legalize marijuana as a medicinal or therapeutic type of drug. And I'd like to respond to that because I completely disagree with everything that both of you have said. Um, this has been studied for 50 years in Israel, paid for by the NIH, the U.S. government, has done 50 years worth of research. There are hundreds of thousands of studies out there, not in the United States because it's a Schedule One drug, but we, the United States has paid for it through Israel, Canada, Australia, Europe, all have thousands of studies that have done. In fact, um, the NIH, excuse me, the Academy of uh, Sciences did a review of 10,000 studies, and they came up with unrefutable evidence that me medical marijuana does alleviate. So I, I need to make a distinction here because the studies that are out there are looking at specific components. There's no study that looks at the entirety of a, of a drug. Like if we were to look at opioids, it'd be the equi equivalent of going to the poppy plant and saying that, that opium is the medicine that we're going to use. That's not a medicine. We look That's at That's correct. But the opium is product. I understand. See, but let me finish. We, looked at, we look at the refined products when we're de dealing with medicine. And within marijuana, there's no question that there are elements of value, but you can find those same elements in hemp, and there's no, there's no greater value that we've seen from marijuana as we do within hemp that adds, that's that just doesn't not true. add. That's not true. That's just not true. I mean, there are 1,500 very, various strains of cannabis. There's only one, very str one or two strains of uh, hemp. And you know, we passed, that Kentucky passed the hemp bill, without FDA approval. We also passed a right to try bill 
And so why can't these 100,000 people in this, this state who have chronic severe illnesses have used because whatever they want? if you talk to the physicians and who in every field who've studied this in, in great detail, the physicians as a whole are saying, look, we are not comfortable with this drug. If you look across the nation, you'll see that physicians are all in alignment, that we're not in favor of using this drug okay. as a whole. That's, that's also not need, true. That's also not true. Let me get in here. The so, American Medical Association. The, 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 the American Society Higginson. of Addiction Medicine, the ASAM, supports Mr. Rouse's conclusion that 25% reduction in overdose from opioids in states with medical marijuana. And I can comment on that. Please do. Uh, so the reductions that we've seen have been in a very short time span. It's been in a year. There's a, there's a component of that that's just simply novelty, that people are switching from adding one other medication to the cocktail. And so yes, we may see a reduction, but I, I, we, all reduction. we all anticipate. It's a 25% reduction. There's 1,400 people in Kentucky that died of an overdose that's going to normalize. Last year. No, no, that's that's let me, Senator Stivers, do you, what do you hear from your constituents? People come up and ask me they don't know really what to do. Um, they hear different things about it. But, but I find it interesting that, that you say you produce me studies. And if you'll let me finish, I actually read them. And it is a, and I will look to a doctor. I'm a lawyer by trade. But these are doctors that did these studies. And they said, look, for anyone under the age of 25, you should not have exposure to marijuana, THC. And we're not disagreeing. And because you, well, but see, that's that's not being told to the public. No, the law, HB 136 says 21, or 18 or older, sir. And how uh, effective has our smoking bills been in reducing there, teens' exposure there, to nicotine? There is incredibly 50, effective. Let, let's stay with House Bill 136. Now, that did not make it to the House floor, but if a similar bill did make it to the House floor next year and passed, would you take it up in the Senate? Again, it depends on what people have put before them. Um, what would the, make you change your mind to maybe open uh, the, the, up? The studies, the studies that I was, and actually they made me sign for them. Mm -hmm. I think Mr. Montalvo, I think Jaime Montalvo <laughs> delivered them. Here they are, and I read them all. And every one of them said, more study, and whether you want to disagree or not with other studies, this is what you all gave me. Sure. And so it says more studies are needed, and this is why. There are two, okay. We have, a, I'm going to get out of here with just one question. In the next two years, yes or no, do you see legalization of medical marijuana, Mr. Rouse? 2020 for sure. Mr. Higdon. Kentucky has seven border states. Four of them have medical marijuana now, including, yes or no. including West Virginia. Absolutely yes. Yes or no. From a physician's perspective, hemp is fine. I would say no. No. Thank you very much. We'll be right back.